Hello, let's do thrift flips today. I have three items that we're gonna take from eh to wow. Let's get started. We're gonna start with this watering can I got off Facebook Marketplace. I purchased three of them for, I believe they were $2 a piece. They were brand new. I tried to spray paint it with some brushed nickel spray paint because I'm gonna try to make it look like some metal, but it didn't work. The spray paint was old and sticky, so I tried to start with some aged gray by Rust-Oleum. Didn't like the way that looked, so I switched to Old School by DIY. I really like the way this color looks on here. I'm stippling it on with this sponge brush because you'll see right here how good of coverage I'm getting. I don't care if it's complete uh, coverage I'm only doing one coat because you see if I try to brush it on this is a slick surface and that does not work so I continue stippling this on and not a super thick coat I just want to cover the white up as much as I can and this is what it looks like when I get the entire thing finished I'm gonna make it look like a galvanized watering can so now I'm gonna take that aged gray by Rust-Oleum and I'm gonna do the same thing all over it again, but a little less coverage. So, um, and I also cut one corner of that brush off, that sponge off to give it a little bit of an angle. So it gives it a little bit different um, texture look when I brush it on. So I'm just sponging that on there, making sure I get it in the in the little crevices around the edge then I take an old chippy brush an old brush that's kind of got roughed up edges and get around those edges now I'm going to take this folk art metallic silver I've had this in my stash for a while and I'm going to use a makeup sponge this is pretty translucent it does you're not going to get full coverage with this in one or two coats so I'm just putting one coat on there and then I'm going to take a smaller sponge and I'm going to just go back and forth with the silver and that old school. I'm gonna go back in there and add some of the old school to give it, it's just adding that dimension and that hammered look and that, you know, that galvanized metal look. And you just keep doing it back and forth. And sometimes I add a little bit of white um, in there. I don't remember if I did it on this on this particular piece or not, but you can add a little white in there. You can add a little bit of dark back in there just keep working it and working it sometimes you just have to trust the process because sometimes i look at it and i think oh my goodness i've messed this up what am i doing just keep sponging just keep sponging because it will turn out good so look at this it turned out great now i'm going to take a little orange and a little brown i'm going to kind of mix them together till i get a kind of rusty color and then a little orange, a little brown, a little more orange, maybe not so much, a little more brown, and just put it in some places where I think natural rust would occur. Around the edges, you know, where some water might have set, and um, just add a little rust. And then I think I did take that silver that was a little bit, the sponge was a little bit dry, and I sponged back over the top of that rust so it wasn't quite so stark. Now I'm taking cow gore cow girl coral tongue twister thank you debbie from diy um, paints for naming that little tongue twister there and i've got these little tags that i got off amazon and i'm just going to paint three of them and then i'm going to use this scripture one plants one sows one waters and god brings the increase this is the scripture that i've got up on the screen and I absolutely love this. This is one of my favorites from, I believe it's 1 Corinthians 3, 6. And it's just talking about how somebody plants a seed and somebody waters it by speaking again. And then God's the one who actually helps us to grow and helps us to come to know him. Now I'm going to use a little clear wax and wax them to protect that wax because with DIY wax, because it's clay based, if we don't seal it, um, it's water soluble and our project will not last. So we don't want to do all this work and then it not last. Now I off camera, apparently off camera, I wrapped some twine around my watering can and now I'm going to string these little tags on this twine. Now if you don't like the way this looks, you can just add it to your twine however you want to. 
this is how I wanted it to look. I'm actually going to use this in my home decor. I have a watering can, one of the three that I, per I actually purchased four of these because I made two and gave them away as wedding gifts. Um, I have one in my house, but I really liked how this one turned out better than the one I already had in my house. So I'm probably going to make that one over on another on, uh, at another time. So I just stringed them up and tied it to the center of that knot so that they'll kind of dangle down a little bit. And I don't want that knot to keep getting thicker and thicker and bigger and bigger. So I just did it once. And then I'm going to take a little super glue, my little super glue hack, and put a little drop of super glue right in the middle of that twine knot so that it doesn't loosen up over time. And then I'm just making a little twine bow and hot glue it to the center. And voila. <music> Friendly and App is going to share some exciting news about an event coming up. Hey friends, I have some incredibly exciting news to share with you today. So how would you like to set sail on the crafting adventure of your lifetime? Introducing the Crafty Cruise Getaway, a one-of-a-kind experience where you can join your favorite creators from five YouTube channels for a relaxing and dreamy Caribbean getaway. Imagine spending five days surrounded by turquoise Caribbean waters, white sandy beaches, and enthusiasts like yourself. It's the ultimate crafting getaway you will remember forever. You'll have the chance to meet and greet each YouTube creator in person. Picture yourself chatting, sharing ideas, taking selfies, laughing, and making memories, all while being inspired by their creativity firsthand. Various live crafting sessions will be held where each creator will guide you through unique and exciting projects. You'll be able to learn new techniques, discover fresh ideas, and take your crafting skills to the next level. Oh, and did I mention the fantastic onboard amenities? Enjoy world-class dining, luxurious accommodations, and many exciting activities to entertain you throughout the cruise. Take advantage of this incredible opportunity to connect, create, and cruise with some of the most talented crafters on YouTube. Due to limited space, head on over to our website, craftycruisegetaway.com, for more information on reserving your spot. Be sure to subscribe to all the participating channels for updates and exclusive content leading up to the event. I can't wait to see you on board the Crafty Cruise Getaway. Our next DIY is this awesome box that my mom brought me i have no idea where she got it there's no telling it looks like maybe a gun cleaning kit that was my dad's maybe um so i decided that we're going to make over this little box and make it a beautiful decor piece so i sanded it lightly i didn't do a lot of heavy sanding just to get like you know the old finish off of it a little bit and then i wiped it down with a soft cloth to get all the loose grit off of it now i'm going to take this weathered wood paint by DIY, pour it in a little container because it is all natural clay-based paint and if we double dip then we can contaminate our paint and apparently it gets stinky. I haven't had any get stinky on me yet so we don't want that because we pay too much for our supplies to ruin them. Now I'm just taking this small brush to get around the hardware on this because they weren't screws, they're like little brads so I couldn't really take it off. But this DIY paint also wipes back really good with a wet or damp cloth because it is clay-based and it's water-soluble until you seal it. Now I'm taking my Klingon brush and brushing one good heavy coat. I did two coats on this, actually. So I do one coat, not too heavy, and then let it dry thoroughly and then do the second coat. And got really good coverage on this. Nice piece of wood. I did the top, the sides, the back. I did not do the inside. And then it's all finished. Then I'm going to take, I believe I took, yes, vintage linen, which is a beautiful white paint. And I put some in a little dish and I have a wide chippy brush. I get these brushes from Dollar Tree and I'm not dry brushing, uh, but I'm wiping most of the excess off. So I'm, um, 
using a very light hand. Let me get that little piece of brush bristle off of there with my tweezers. I'm using a light hand. I'm not painting really hard. You know, I'm not putting a lot of pressure. But I want to leave those streaks in there. So I'm making sure that I don't dry brush it and um, give a lot of coverage. I want to see those streaks in there because I want this to look old. I want that that weathered wood color to come through so it looks a little chippy and old without having to do a lot of sanding and and what have you. So look how gorgeous that turned out with just paint and a chippy brush. Now I am going to sand the edges a little bit. Um, the paint is pretty thick on there so I'm just going to sand the edges a little bit. I don't want to sand back too much of that paint because I absolutely love how it turned out. I'm going to open the box and I'm going to sand the edges where it opens all the way around. I just show you this front little part but I did do it all the way around and then I take my cloth and I get all that sand off. Now I'm going to use these IOD transfers. This pack is gorgeous. I can't remember the name of it and I opened it too quickly but it's beautiful. I get my IOD products from Elsie at Two Chicks Home and Market. She's in Denison, Texas but she also has a beautiful website and you can go to it. The link will be in the description box and for first time buyers you can get a 10% discount with that link. Now I had originally going to use all those little seed packet one Look, looking ones but I changed my mind because we can do that right um, and don't be afraid to cut up your transfers you do not have to use them exactly as they come so I cut out these flowers I think this floral transfer is absolutely gorgeous so I put it on there a little bit crooked you know just be creative and so I'm not gonna show you all the detail about this you can see lots and lots of videos where we a lot of creators do these transfers you just rub 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 with the little tool that comes with it and peel up slowly and gently making sure that your transfer is coming away from the plastic carrier sheet and that your transfer is staying on your project and then when you're done you use that carrier sheet and burnish it rub it down so that you get any stickies off and that it's adhered good to your project. I think this is beautiful and it looks like it's made on your project. So I took this little wording and I thought it looked cute right there. Apparently I think it looks cute if I put it on there. So, And then I took the little seed packets that I was going to use on in the beginning and put them on top. I don't show you all of it because this video would be really long if I show you every little step of everything that I did. So I just am showing you here that I just cut all the little pieces apart. You can do that with your transfers. There's you, they're yours. You can do whatever you want to with them. Now I'm taking clear wax by DIY and I'm gonna wax up this beauty and make it gorgeous. Hello, welcome to Late Night Creations. I'm Kendra and I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that you've returned. I'm glad that you found me. I'm glad that you're here because I love crafting with you. So let's get back to the video. Be sure to give it a thumbs up. Sometimes it's hard to remember. You get so busy watching, you forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit that little red subscribe down there and the bell. The bell is important because it's going to remind you in your little notifications up there where the little bell is when I post a video, which is typically every weekend. So let's get back to crafting. That's what we're here for. Our last DIY is this piece I picked up from a thrift store for $2.49. It had been purchased at Ross and I'm sure in its day it was a really beautiful little planter or I'm not sure what you would use this for. I've got my vintage linen and I've poured it in my little container. I've got my Klingon brush and I'm going to give it one good coat. This had great coverage. It was covered the, it was like paper. It had like this paper on it, like it was decoupaged on there. Um, it was like that from the store. It didn't look like someone had put that on there. But as I was cleaning it, it the paper got wet and I could see that it was paper on there. So that's why it was so easy to paint over. So I gave it 
really one good coat. And now I'm going to use my IOD molds. And I'm using the um, Amazing Resin. Let me think what I'm using here. And you just mix A and parts A and B together, mix it thoroughly, and then work quickly because it sets up in 10 minutes. So you have to work quickly to get it poured in those molds. There have been plenty of times I haven't poured quickly enough and it starts setting up in my cup. So I love the IOD molds versus the cheaper molds because it has that little, I call it a little lip around the edge that shows you how full to make it. Okay, after 10 minutes, which this set longer than 10 minutes, but um, you can pull them out and they are still pliable. Mine were not still pliable, so you will see me in a little while because mine set overnight. You will see that I heat it up with the heat gun to make them more pliable. Okay, here's my finished painted piece, and we are going to put these molds on our piece. Now, if you find this amazing resin, there is also a clear one that takes 24 hours to set up. Please don't buy it on accident. Make sure that you get the 10 minute white one. Now I'm using my heat gun to heat this up because if you heat it up a little bit, it will get soft and you can you can um, mold it a little bit. So I'm using the tight bond, uh, whatever that said, thick and tight. And I'm gonna spread it around on the back of this and form it to the side of this little planter. I'm calling this a planter because I'm gonna put a plant in it. Artificial, of course. And so I did that with all the pieces. I did that with the laurels and the bee and the crown. And I did end up taping it with some painter's tape. I'm just using that paintbrush to get the glue that seeped out. And, you know, from making a glob. Uh, I did not have to heat up the crown because it was small enough that it didn't have to wrap around anywhere. But the bee, I... Just manipulated it all, and it went on there really nicely. And then I did paint the, I'm not sure if I got this on camera, but I did paint the molds with the vintage linen because it was just a slightly different color than the vintage linen. Uh, I did take some painter's tape and tape these down so they wouldn't move until they dried. Uh, this glue does dry pretty fast, but I didn't want them to cool and take back their original shape. I don't know that they would do that, but I didn't want to take that chance. So I just put some painter's tape on it and set it aside for a few hours so that it would dry really good. Oh, that was beadboard. Uh, well, I used beadboard on that. Because I probably, because I couldn't remember what color I used. Oopsie. Well, beadboard and vintage linen are very close. Very, very close. I took all my DIY paints and painted swatches on a long strip of wood. And I'll show you guys that in a future video. I'm just teasing you now to say, oh, watch the next video so you can see. I do have a craft cottage tour video coming up soon. And you will see it in that. So stay tuned. Don't miss a video. Make sure you have that subscribed bell button. Okay, here we go. So now I'm going to take the DIY dark wax and use a, this is a actually a wax brush and just stipple it in there and try to get it. I was trying to get it all in the nooks and crannies and then wipe it away and it was not coming out how I wanted it to. And I stopped and I looked at it and I was frustrated. So I got the clear and I started trying to wipe some of that back and it wasn't working like I wanted it to. And I just kept going with it. I was like, just keep going with it. Just keep going with it. Don't stop. Just keep going. And I just kept doing the dark and the clear and the dark and the clear. And then I got out the white wax. And once you see what happened when I got the white wax out, it starts looking really good. So... Don't give up on your projects, guys. Just keep going. Just don't give up. Just keep going. Just keep doing stuff. Sometimes I just keep doing stuff and it doesn't look good. Oh, no, I started. I did some of the shipwrecked first because I wanted to have it look like it was a little bit, you know, tarnished. But I forgot to do the gold on it first. I kind of got a little bit out of, out of uh, sync. 
but I was like kind of frustrated because it wasn't really turning out how I wanted it to. As I'm looking at it now, I'm thinking it doesn't look so bad, but I know what the end result looks like. So there you go. So I just keep putting that on there and wiping it off. Just in some places where I think it would look good. I don't know. You just have to use your own judgment on where you put where you put rusted or tarnished looking the look for the, that look. I liked it around the edge on that little rope rope part. Okay, now we're going to use the gilding wax, the gold gilding wax. And I did it very lightly. I didn't want a lot of it on there. I wanted it to look kind of like it had maybe rubbed off. Like maybe it had it on there and then it had gotten rubbed off. So I just kept putting it on my fingers and rubbing my fingers together so that it wasn't real strong on there. And then just lightly rubbing it on the leaves. I rubbed it across the bee and the crown. I rubbed it around the edges of the, on the edges a little bit of this planter and across that little rope detail across the top. I love that rope detail across the top. I think it looks cute. And then those little legs, the little ornate legs, they are, they're adorable too. It's just so fun to work with uh, projects that have detail. And this just didn't have enough details until I put those molds on there. And they just add so much to it. That's it for this video. I really hope that you enjoyed these thrift flips and let me know which was your favorite. Get out there and look for junk to make over or look for junk in your own house. I have plenty of that too. And remember to be still and know that he is God. Music